Hello and welcome to another uh, road trip episode. Uh, today it's a bit of a special one. First, uh, we're in the test level on three, so this is actually mine replacing the, the i3 you've seen, you've seen before. Um, and this is going to be a longer road trip because I'm actually driving all the way to France. Um, so that's, that's it's a Tesla, so it should be relatively easy. But as you know, I like a challenge. Even though I didn't really want to do that, uh, I'm actually late for my ferry. So I'm, I left Cork half an hour ago, I think, and I have to take the ferry in Dublin port. Uh, I left with 100% charge, and this being the standard range plus, the um, destination I'm supposed to have just a handful of. of person battery left actually this tells me two persons also if I follow this I arrive 15 minutes just 15 minutes before the end of the check-in <laughs> so ooh, this is not super great however I have a charger booked in the ferry so I took uh, Irish ferries and that's the only uh, ferry uh, company offering uh, charging facilities for EV drivers so that's is, this is cool and actually I'm talking about that in the video about France so you might want to check it uh, later um, but this is actually an interesting situation and I tell you why sometimes you've got to think a bit more when you're driving an EV and the solutions might not be the ones that you might think um, so as per the sat nav it tells me um, that uh, I arrived in Dublin Port with one person. Uh, actually, it was five uh, person, and then it went down. And that's the only day today where um, there's no tailwind from uh, going from uh, Cork to Dublin. Lucky, so I've got headwind. Doesn't help. Um, so the, the sat nav is telling me to to reduce my speed. It's the first day, 115 kilometers an hour, and now 110. But actually, it's not even reaching 110 now. It's it tells me just to to stop charging so I've got the option to start in, in, in stop in Balakula for just a few minutes might do that but there is another aspect of it uh, the the route it makes me take is actually going through the tunnel uh, in the north side of Dublin so it's actually a detour in uh, it's shorter in time and we're against the clock but it's in a detour in kilometers and driving a bit faster it's gonna use more energy than if I was going on the keys straight so the question would be how much how much slower would be the route to the keys and how many person can I save doing that because if I save a couple of person uh, using that uh, city center route then I can drive a bit faster and maybe I'll arrive in, arrive earlier at the end of the day so um, it's, a, it's an interesting calculation. Unfortunately, I'm alone, I have to drive. So um, just using my brain, might need, I might need uh, something more, but <laughs> um, I'll consider this. I'll uh, give you an update a bit later. Maybe I'll stop for five minutes in uh, Balakula in the supercharger. Uh, maybe I won't. Um, let's do some calculation and I'll tell you what I'm doing. Date on the trip. Uh, I've been driving for an hour. I've driven 110 kilometers now. Um, the average consumption is actually 20 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometer, or 200 watt hours per kilometer if you are um, a Tesla driver. Um, so that's that's extremely high. It's because of the wind, uh, obviously. So. Um, I decided to stop in Balakula, uh, the supercharger. I'll just stop five minutes going to the bathroom and back. It should be just giving me a few, a few more percent, just enough to uh, to get comfortably at a normal speed uh, to Dublin. I still don't know if I will take the tunnel or the city. Um, I couldn't check on Google Maps because to, to make the difference, you have to check with or without the toll. And if you remove the toll, it removes the toll that's on the M7 junction with the M8. So 
I don't know exactly, but I'll check it out later also because traffic at all. So, and also I'll do a very quick stop in Nace. Um, I'm picking up something. I'll show you just later from uh, Electric Autos uh, and Phil Fitzgerald. Uh, you probably know him. Many of us of you have probably bought a, a car from this place. I'll show you that later and I'll give you an update uh, in Barracuda when I'm charging. Okay, so this is charging at uh, almost 100 kilowatts, so that's not too bad. Uh, let's see uh, if we can stay there for five minutes and see how it goes. All right, so I'm gonna stop my charge now. I think we've stayed like for like six minutes or so. Um, so you see, uh, I'm gonna arrive in Dublin port with 15% if I stop now so it should be fine and yes and I, if I show you the charging curve uh, so it was around 100 kilowatts at 39% and at 59% and still 61 um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how much time uh, how many minutes probably around uh, five or six let's go a little update, so we just left Nace and Electric Autos and this is what I got. It's a registration plate, uh, yeah, why is that? Um, simply, yeah, I have two already. Uh, simply, I'm getting a third one because I have a trailer and I'd like to do some tests, of course, just to see how the, this car can handle uh, a trailer because this car comes with a, trail, um, a tow hitch. Uh, it's just 910 kilos, so but my trailer is small anyway. So we'll see what we can do, but we'll do that in the in the next few days. In the meantime, back to the trip. Um, I'm not going to go through the city. Uh, that's a bit crazy, obviously. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of traffic. I think it's like a 20 minute detour in time, so uh, that's way too long. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just simply uh, take the tunnel. And the ETA is just seven minutes before the end of the check-in. So, you know what? Uh, yeah, that's the best thing to do. in um, Irish Ferries booth there. We have 13 percent left, so plenty to go. Um, so we're charging 20, for 20% in Barracola, so that was necessary, definitely. Uh, let's see how it gets here with the electric car charging point. Booked, reserved actually, so we should be okay. And we are just four minutes before the end of the check-in. Just one car in front of us. How are you? Julian, just your passport. Is this is this okay? Thank you, darling. Agent V8. Yeah. All good. Um, I've got an um, electric uh, charging point booked. Okay. Should I say it to anyone or something like this? I'll sort you out now. Thank you. Just stick that on the window of your car there. Yeah. That's, hang that on your centre Yes. Keys to your cabin. Yes. Room numbers on the boarding cards. Perfect, thanks a lot. Robert? We get you into lane 18. 18, all right. Thank you very much. 
Seems easy. Okay, lane 18. This is the one there. So, unlike the the one, uh, because I took I took uh, Irish ferries in the past with the um, electric electric car charging point, and like. They give you this so you can yeah you put it on the dashboard so obviously people putting your like loading the cars into the the boat can can know what to do because last time it was not too impressive so yeah this sounds like a good solution easy workaround so let's see how it goes Up there? Thank you. Thanks. I might have to maneuver because I'm not sure my... You want any to turn around? Yeah. Is that okay? The tunnel is okay. You can stop. So I just uh, parked there and uh, plugged the car in the charge point. I had to do a U-turn a, a because the, it is in a corner. So if you have your charging port in the back, you have to reverse into this. But it's fine. Um, I was guided very well and they have some bullets there. So they really um, cater for this. There's only one charge point. So um, this is somewhat limited, but we all know that not so many people today drive electric vehicles away um it's only a 16 amp uh, charge point not a big deal because 15 hours to charge and the crossing is like 18 or 19 so uh, the car will be charged up when i'll be on the other side of the channel all right we are now in cherbourg um, so the car is charged. It's 98 uh, percent, probably because um, it charged 100 percent. I had a center mode on, so it probably um, used a couple of persons since it's it's charged up. So um, that's fine anyway. I've got plenty of charge. Uh, you can see here 14 events. So I receive a couple of notification of the alarm. Uh, to be honest, the first time, so I'm not sure exactly how the alarm works. So I'll look it up anyway. Uh, it's pretty obvious. The thing is, like, cars are kind of close to each other, and uh, you see that uh, person quite careful there next to me. Uh, <laughs> I'll look it up later. Uh, the, the map hasn't updated yet, though. So um, we, are, we are at Key in Cherbourg, so uh, probably it hasn't, uh, it hasn't updated yet. 764, yeah, it, it considers as we're still... Uh, in Dublin, so um, right. sorry for that. I try to learn Danish, right? So that's the language. Uh, so yeah, we're supposed to be there. Uh, so I'll show you what I'm doing. We're supposed to be there with uh, sorry, there with 100%, and we'll just drive to Rennes and we'll do a quick uh, charge there. This is supercharger straight on the way and then down to now the last 120 kilometers also so that's um that should be nice it's 20 degrees now i think the forecast is like 30 uh, this afternoon not so it's gonna be a a nice hot day later uh, let's see how it goes um and then i'll tell you more once we're on the road i'll tell you more about how it works uh with the other evs that same route because I've taken that route with other EVs in the past, my previous ones. So it's going to be interesting to compare. Because if you're looking into buying an EV, those things can make a difference. 
Um, and then I'll tell you as well what would work if I had taken a long range Tesla Model 3 because this is a standard range plus so of course if you take a long range it could make a bit of a difference as well. from Cherbourg and we have another 182 to do um, so that's um, that's gonna be quite easy to run um, the predicted range is well the, pre the predicted um, level of charge at destination is 11 person so that's just enough um, so uh, it's quite easy it's just motorway um, 90 110 and then later there's a big section so we'll test as well the, the consumption at that uh, speed. Uh, so yeah, the supercharger is placed at the perfect location because the state of charge will be very low, so we'll charge very quickly. Something interesting I saw on the, on the Tesla. So you've got the speed limit displayed if you have a Tesla. And then just below there is another speed limit displayed in grey with a different kind of weather sign so there was like 50 for fog and 100 instead of 110 with rain so I think it actually detects um, uh, the fog or the rain and can adjust the actual speed limit that said the, 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 the speed limit is supposed to recognize the speed limit but uh, the signs they are it's not working very well anyway not today so a good thing to do um, I wanted to discuss a bit about what if you don't have a Tesla and what would you do if you drive to Cherbourg and then need to go to the south uh, it's actually not very easy uh, unfortunately there are not many if you drive a CCS uh, standard car it's uh, it's quite difficult the reason is they are not uh, there are no fast charger in the north of the département so you have to drive about 100 kilometers before, before finding the first 50 kilowatt CCS charger DC charger uh, from Chabot there's no choice so you have to make sure that you have a good range when you disembark so either you um, you charge you fast charge before embarking which is very possible because close to Dublin or Rosslare or um, Cork, you've got fast chargers very close to the port so you can you can do 90 percent uh, in disembarking and then yeah you have to you have to factor this in it's not very pleasant um, but either charge in a ferry or before um, if you have um, a chademo you can charge in Auchan which is in Chabot so there is one there and it's fast AC as well uh, if you're a Zoe driver, if you're a Zoe driver, you're not going to get too many trouble because plenty of 22 kilowatt all around the place. Uh, so you, you're going to be fine anyway, even if the fast AC is not working. Plenty 22 kilowatt. Just be careful. Like for example, if you have a um, Nissan uh, Leaf, you need to charge in Salo, which is about maybe 80 kilometers south of Cherbourg. Um, if you if you have one with a kind of short range you stop there it's a Nissan garage but they of course are closed on the Sundays so just make sure you don't arrive too late or if you arrive on a Sunday you might be in trouble because there are not many chatimos around uh, so that's not very practical um, then once you reach the south once you've done the first hundred kilometers there is a good number of uh, CCS chargers on, on your way uh, whether you go to Paris if you go to the east 
or if you go to the south to Rennes, that's what I'm doing today, and then Nantes and the south. So those those routes are okay, and the the fast chargers are um, in exits, so they are quite practical. The only thing compared to Ireland, just be, be aware that there are no facilities. Very often, those uh, this is public money and this is public infrastructure, so it's not private money having an interest in you in spending money into into a coffee or something like this. So they are putting it where they could, where probably they could get a permit. Uh, easily so it's really public land very often like you know so <laughs> but it means it could be in the middle of nowhere with nothing to do no toilet no shop no vending machine nothing and you just have this this uh, fast charger and that's it nothing else to do so <laughs> just just be aware it's not necessarily in the resting areas which is a shame because the those those resting areas the services that are along the motorways they are really good and you've got car parks and toilets and everything and for some reason there are not many fast chargers on this it's kind of rare anyway in this part of the of the country uh, there are not many I know them all I've been them all at some stage and none is one of those places so it's a bit of a shame uh, so if you need to go to the bathroom you have to stop in a different location so it's not really uh, time efficient let's say um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to tell you. I'm gonna give you an update when we arrive in Rennes. Uh, that's gonna be in a, uh, like an hour and a half, probably something like this. And uh, it should be quite easy to get there. And then uh, we'll uh, we'll see. What uh, so we are now almost in Rennes, uh, cruising at 132 kilometers an hour. So that's uh, 130 rail speed. Um, Consumption was 17.9 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers. So um, yeah, quite good considering the speed. I haven't stopped at all since Chabot, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure how long I've been on the road for. Well, probably a couple of hours now. Um, so this is when you need to stop and charge and recharge yourself. Anyway, uh, so yeah, um, a 15, 14 person battery, and I should arrive in the supercharger in the end. With 11 persons, I'll just stay for five minutes, maybe 10, because I just need a hundred something kilometers uh, to reach destination. So yeah, maybe just 10 minutes. Uh, we'll have a look at the at the power uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, the drive was very easy um, here. It's very sunny. Temperature is up 27 degrees now, so it's getting a bit warm in there. I don't find the air conditioning very impressive because it's it feels hot inside despite being on 19 degrees. Um, so I don't know, maybe the, there's too much glass and because it's yeah, sunny. So um, yeah, let's see how it goes anyway. So we are now charging. It's ramping up. So unfortunately, out of the I think eight stalls. <laughs> There was only one available, so I'm sharing this one with a Model S that's just parked next to me. 74 kilowatt, so yeah, it's not amazing. Uh, yeah, probably because it's sharing. Let's see if it changes. I'm not going to stay longer anyway. So I will assume that um, the car next to me is charged up because I'm getting 148 kilowatt, so that's a lot. And I think that's one of those, um, okay, that's one of the ones at 150. And I can see here something interesting, high usage supercharger station. Yeah, obviously charging limit say to 80%. So that means probably we have those penalty fees if we stay too long. So that's good. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to charge that much. Uh, I'm checking my emails and by the time uh, I'll be ready. Um, I'll be out of the way and so somebody else can charge. Alright, my trip is, uh, is almost over. Um, it took me about four, hour, four hours to do the 350 kilometers more or less. I had a little detour. Um, <clears throat> 
literally lost more time in the traffic than charging. Uh, so uh, the, the traffic at the end was not very good. But anyway, uh, yeah, that was very easy. I have two alpha some left. Uh, and I think it shows that if those superchargers are placed correctly, um, you don't really need a large battery because you have to stop anyway after a couple of hours of driving etc so they are convenient stops um, and so what I would say is like maybe in the future we have many many more fast chargers and batteries might not be as big as we might want them today uh, so yeah so that's my perspective for today <laughs> anyway so uh, stay tuned for a few more episodes um, over the last next few weeks uh, I'll review a few things I mentioned the trailer already so that's gonna be done soon and a few other interesting cars 